A pointer is a variable that stores a memory address. A pointer is just like any other kind of variable except for the data type. While a normal variable is a placeholder for things we normally classify as data, a pointer refers to memory rather than the memory contents. Suppose we have an int variable called x. Let's assign the number 25 to x. Now x contains a data value, the number 25. Pretty simple. Now let's look under the hood. Like all variables, x is a named space in memory. The real identity of x is not its variable name. Instead, the real identity of x is its unique address in RAM, or random access memory. Since a pointer is a variable, it's also a named location in memory. Suppose we declare a pointer to an integer. We will give the pointer the identifier y. Note that the data type of y is not int. The asterisk symbol tells us that y is not of int, but a pointer to an int. In other words, the data type of y is pointer to int. Now we can use y to access int variables indirectly. Let's assign the pointer y to the int variable x. The ampersand symbol, or reference operator, gives us the address of the variable x. So remember, putting an ampersand symbol in front of a variable returns the memory address of that variable. So if you output the contents of y, you will get the address of x. Not only can you store the address of another variable in a pointer, you can also access the data stored in this other variable. The asterisk symbol, or dereference operator, lets you view the contents of x indirectly. In summary, referencing returns the address of a variable, while dereferencing returns the actual object stored in that variable. Not only can you get the contents of a variable indirectly with pointers, you can also change the contents. Here's an example. Suppose we want to store the number 35 in x instead of 25. We can reset the variable x using pointer y. Now variable x contains the number 35. There is an interesting relationship between pointers and arrays. Firstly, note that the array reference is itself a pointer. In the picture, we have an array of ints. That means we can traverse down the array in int-sized increments. Since the elements of an array are contiguous in memory, we can hop from one element to the next simply by incrementing the address to the next element in the array. Besides iterating through an array, we can also use pointers to create dynamic arrays. A dynamic array is an array that is created during runtime rather than at compile time. When we create an ordinary static array, we have to specify the length at compile time, or by compile time. With the dynamic array, we can specify the array length at runtime. Here's an example. Suppose we declare a pointer to an int called pumpkin. We can now use pumpkin as a reference to an array of any size. Suppose we add logic to our program that asks the user to input a number. Let this number be n, the size of the array. Next, we can create this array of n elements using the new operator. We are now allocating n spaces in memory for int-sized objects. Pointers are essential to instantiating objects during runtime, but since C++ doesn't provide automatic garbage collection, you will have to delete your dynamic variables programmatically. If you create an array dynamically, it's important to free up this memory once the program terminates. To avoid crashing your computer and losing precious unsaved data, always use the delete operator to free up memory used by dynamic variables. And thanks for watching.